Okay, cool. hi everyone. Um, so we have a few karma tests and we want to get rid of those karma tests, but they are tests that need to run in a browser. Mm -hmm. So let's have a look uh, whether we can uh, port them. And one idea was port them to copy bar. But um, I actually cheated a bit and had a look uh, into this. Um, so um, I had the following idea. I was like, hey, we just have like five spec files. So maybe let's have a look at these spec files on a high level first and decide whether we should port them to Capybara or not, or if they are actually portable, right? Um, Great idea. So let's have a look into uh, this Balsamic viewer browser spec. And I think that's a great candidate for being ported because it essentially loads a Balsamic file and then checks if the Balsamic file is there test right because we just need to seed it and add a um yeah yeah um yeah this so, is a fantastic case for just doing some sort of feature spec yeah but we exactly. may already have a feature spec available so we can probably just get rid of this or we might even be able to copy like another feature spec right so yeah um i just Let's, let's, you know, good. I think this one is an easy one. And, um, um, can, can, I, can we see the rest of the file? I, so I, like the act of here is we're loading the specific viewer and then we just see, hey, we're, did we stop loading? And did we start showing previews? Oh, oh yeah. That's, that's super portable, right? Or I, just I, removable, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that's cool. That's a good find. Great. Um, second one. So fixtures is empty. Okay. So this one is interesting because we have a content to top scrolling thing, which to be honest, I mean, this is hard because it's like a common util. So it's like nothing that is directly there. One could argue, hey, let's test the behavior instead and actually find where this is used and click some button and scroll to the top and call it a day or something, right? Um, so this, this one is a bit, um, I'm just, you know, adding, uh, oops, uh, adding a meh here. Um, if you do, so check this out. Yeah. Um, another way of, uh, do a project wide, oh, hey, Jose. Um, do a project-wide search for content top. It is only used once. Yeah, it's used in scroll top, right? It's used in scroll to element. Scroll to element, yeah. And I mean, I have a complete other grievance with scroll to element, and I think we even have an issue of replacing it with a native scroll, um, because right now it uses jQuery. So we could even be like, we drop the test and say, hey, we have this follow up, up, follow up epic to replace scroll to element with some native stuff because by now we have native stuff where you don't need to add like these offsets and other shenanigans, right? Yeah. I Like we have the scroll into view kind of thing, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think... Um... And even those are not used in a lot of cases, right? I, th I think content top can be a just spec. Um, I, I, that, yeah, I, I don't feel good about moving that to Capybara. Um, okay, meh, remove, just. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's, let's go on. <laughs> because I would, you know, in the worst case, uh, after we've done this, we can create issues for all of these because I assume that time-wise we won't get to all of these. Oh, don't um, don't sell ourselves short, IP. No, you never. Be surprised. Um, okay, so this one is an interesting one. Um, this is create overlay icon, which basically create uses canvas to um, to which uses canvas to build a new Fafficon, right? So this probably could be unit tested theoretically in Jest.
And the other one that actually checks that the icon is set could definitely be unit tested, right? We could just, you know, unit test it in jest and it could also be tested uh, like the set CI status I Fafikon could actually be tested in Capybara that the icon changes. And that being said, it's all a bit ugly because we actually have some mock data we compare it to and we do it with a pixel tolerance comparison. I don't know. To be honest, the easiest way probably to deal with this is by extracting this whole icon shenanigans into GitLab UI, even though it might not belong there as a helper function because then we could just do the combination of sorts yeah. in GitLab UI and have the screenshot test doing the whole comparison for us. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, let me ask another, another approach. Yeah. Um, can you do non-components in Storybook? Can we do like util functions in Storybook? Does that make sense? Uh, you mean for screenshots? Yeah, so look, this kind of thing where we're like doing images, I feel like, yeah, we can unit test this, but we're I mean, going to be mocking a lot of stuff around it. And it's like, the real question is, does it look like, does it look right? And we've talked a lot about doing a GitLab project storybook um, for automated screenshot testing. Um, so the fun thing first here is that a screenshot will actually, uh, Fafikon will never be on a screenshot, right? Um, because you always just screenshot the, the inorts of the browser uh, in these storybook tests. So I, I, I think, I mean, the thing you can test is you can actually, you know what's probably the, Ah, yeah, so the problem is why, why do we do this? Because we have the different Fafikons depending on the environment, right? Like the GitLab Canary icon and the GitLab localhost green one. And we do this in order to combine it with the current status and have that on the pipelines page. Like the pipeline, yeah. Yep. Yeah. But to be honest, maybe the easier solution actually is generate those nine permutations of the Fafikon and put it on top. I don't know if users actually can set their own Fafikon, then it would be problematic, right? <laughs> I bet they could. Um, it's just HTML. Uh, no, I mean, is, is it a setting? Because the question is, how does the code actually work? So does it get like- Ah, uh, and maybe that is why we're doing this like manual- Canvas, whatever, right? I mean, the other, other option would be to move it to a different package and test it there and calling it the day. Yeah, no, that's interesting. I was trying to think of like, what would be the absolute ideal? I realize we might not hit that, but. Um... Yeah, so by the way, we always had problems in the past as well because the browser sub suddenly changed with the canvas rendering. So what we're actually doing is like, we we get data URLs and then we compare it with some pixel matcher kind of thing. So it's, um, yeah, and I don't know. I mean, we also could move it to Jest essentially, right? We could mock, we could mock the set Fafikon overlay thing because that's, we could just mock in Jest. And we actually could test this in, uh, with us probably using a Canvas library that does it. So, so what are, uh, yeah, just. what are the actual, what are the actual um, tests that we're testing currently in Karma? Okay, so the one is create overlay icon. So it actually tests oh, that- we're actually you know, seeing if it looks right. Yeah. We, 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 we equaling the image, equaling, yeah, you know what I mean. Um, finally though, we implemented it, and I know that <laughs> because I implemented it uh, with our own matchup. Um, so we have, there's like this pixel match library. And to be honest, like, as we have this own matcher, we probably can port it, uh, this part that it looks right. We probably can port to Jest, right? Uh, oh, wow. I bet you're right. How I mean, you yeah, we, we would not test the browser API though, or that what a browser generates actually looks like it. Right. Oh, and that's, that's the, what this matcher is doing though, because it is doing stuff with Canvas, right? The matcher does stuff with Canvas as well, right? 
Um, I think the under the hood, it's a good question. No, it, I think it does something. With me. I meant um, before, right? If you go up, <laughs> up in the stack, you see yeah. um, at the get image data. Yeah. Yeah, this is a tough one. Um, but I mean, it's basically testing the canvas internals, right? Like. Yeah, but it's also we're using that we're using the canvas internals to test. Does this visually look right? And yeah. doing some sort of I wouldn't want to. And even though this is like a super small function, like I still, ideally, we're not losing any coverage. Uh, it would be nice to keep some sort of the visual regression here. The fact that we're doing this canvas context stuff. I I don't know what. What do you all think, Nico, Jose, or Vitaly? I am more following for now. I'll, I'll be more active in a sec. Oh, you're good. I'm sorry. Uh, carry on, Nico. <laughs> I mean, this looks like a very good way to test. I, I don't have any strong feelings about this one, but if, if we can unit test it, I'm, I'm all up for it. I mean, if we have, I mean, we often mock browser APIs, right? Or there is like implementations of browser APIs like fetch or whatnot in, um, mm -hmm. so if we trust those, right? Why wouldn't we trust like a Canvas implementation that would work in Jest, right? Because right now we're just checking that it looks the same in, um, in, in Chrome essentially, right? Doesn't even mean that it looks the same in Firefox or another browser. And to be honest, like we have the, um, we have the mock data here and it's actually the, the, the you know, the favicon URL, the data URL and the result. So theoretically that should also work with. Sure. Um, yeah. With in a node environment, if there's a cam, yeah. like, if you want to, you have Google right next to you, right next to you. If you want to see if, is there one? Yes. Wait, let me go to the back. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. To be honest, like, I think there is one because, yeah. So, and the only problem with this one is, as you can guess, um, yeah, it's one that's pre-built, you know, and you need a bunch yeah. of stuff, you know, that's, um, yep. yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's the, that's the hardest part. And I know that I was removing my hair over this, uh, <laughs> um, the last time I touched it. Yeah. So the, there's a, the other uh, idea would be, the other things that we've been tossing around is having a Jest browser environment because um, you can run Jest in a browser. Um, but I'm you know, not sure if you do that, do you still get the test isolation that we get when we run them in Node? And that was our whole point with moving away from Karma. Like, well, if I you mean, destroy the browser with every test, probably yes, right? Now that'll be really slow, right? So we don't want to otherwise, do this for everything. Otherwise, the, or navigate to a new page. I don't know. Um, that's the only two way that you can ensure that you didn't pollute the global scope. I mean, I mean. Uh, so this is why I mean, like, hey, even even just remove. You know, we don't have this just browser environment right now. Um, as a maintainer, would you generally be fine if we remove, for example, these overlay tests and say, hey, we need to follow up for this because the whole idea is that in a relatively short time frame, um, we remove this because it's just money that we burn and energy that we burn that's useless, right? This is a function yeah. that has been tested now for, I don't know, right? Um, it, uh, it will and, change. Like, that's the thing is this function will end up changing and some community contributor is going to find something of like, oh, we could do something here. And when that happens, you could ask yourself, am I going to end up manually testing this anyways? Like, so if I'm manually testing things anyways, like, 
and we don't have a whole lot of automated test tests for just this thing like what is the real value of here if, if we are removing it i'm just thinking of all the options i would say let's just skip it um for now let's okay kick, for this test great, let's, great. let's kick the can down the road because this this is different than the other browser tests because this is very visual and yeah. that's okay. that's a little tough okay i mean if it's visual i actually would say hey maybe maybe moving it to gitlab ui would be a possibility that's because great, like com I think com combining these two icons and using that in a test, and I mean, we could write a little test component around it because it's basically, hey, call this function on mount and put it in an image tag. And if it looks the same, it looks the same, right? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. That's actually a really good approach is, and it would require us reworking it to where we can isolate just the visual part. And that's yeah. going to be a lot more maintainable. And then we can do visual testing on just whatever's doing that visual part. Um, yeah. and then we can unit test, okay, did we actually set the Fabicon like we expected? And that's, and then I yeah. think we're good. That's a good idea. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Because yeah, in all these others, we're basically testing this function multiple times, right? Like, yeah, we, we test that, that it's, uh, that it's built correctly. And then we test that we can set it, but we also test that the set one, you know, matches the thing and then at some point, you also has to have to trust the browser, kind of like, hey, if I set a Fafikon, the Fafikon changes, right? Like, yeah. Says says Lucas after he's been fixing Chrome eighty four bugs. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm I'm sorry, I'm I'm giving you a hard time. I mean, the the good thing is after that, you know, in case we run into a bug here, then after that we could just call it not Fafikon because it's not our favorite <laughs> anymore. Um, and also, as I mentioned before, right, you just tested in Chrome right now, so yeah. Um, okay. Um, is in viewports, this is an interesting one. This is interesting. Like, is in viewport. Mm. Oh, this is, this is unit testable. It, the question is, is do we even there's probably like something new, right? Ah, it, it has like an offset thingy. I we mean, use it a couple of times, yeah. But, but not that often, right? Like, I mean, there's probably a newer, newer and more better way to check if an element is in, similar to the scroll to thing, right? That probably is a, is a good way um, we can use um, like intersection observer um, is one approach, uh, but I, you know, I've I've seen this before. This definitely doesn't mean that it's visible, but yeah, okay. So what do we do about this spec? Also I postpone think it's, it? I think this one can be moved to just because um, the bit that we really are interested in is that get bounding client rect, given that and the window state, like are we calculating this correctly? And we could do a lot more test coverage than I see what we have right here and not couple ourselves to this specific browser environment where, yeah. And, and so I think that this is a good unit test opportunity. Um, it'd be nice to have some of those, just while we're talking about everything, it'd be nice to have some of those specific instances, those specific use cases, like in this merge request widget, when it's in the viewport, we do this thing. Like, it'd be nice to have that covered in a capybara spec. Um, and I'm not, I'm tired. just to make sure we have everything working yeah. in integration, but um, that's not necessary here. So yeah, I, cool, move to suggest, and we're done with the file. Cool, yeah, dashboard. Oh, so, this was really tough. Oh man, I remember this one. But to be honest, like that to me looks like, hey, uh, we should the response to window resizes. So what is actually resizing here? So client with. Do you remember software. this? I think we worked on this, Nico. Do you remember this? Yeah, isn't this a good candidate go, to go straight to Capybara? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the, prob the problem of this is that it's testing stuff that are completely far from what is actually trying to test, right? If I re remember correctly. I think you're right. I think this is a full mounted test. Yeah, testing something some, something else behavior somewhere. 
So if we can understand the behavior and move it to Capybara, probably this is a win. Uh, there's only one problem. Uh, I can I can t attest to this one because Adriel worked on this and a, a while back. Ooh. And the problem with the metrics dashboard, and it, this is something that we're currently working on, is that this is coupled with a Prometheus server or a Kubernetes uh, cluster. And the problem is that we in Capybara we cannot mock those. So this is something yeah, that the monitoring team has been trying to do forever, and backend engineers have been trying to figure out how to mock uh, one of those data sources. Yeah. Looks like we got to get a real Kubernetes server up. <laughs> yeah, no, that will be, that would be uh, way too expensive to run. Yeah. Um, yeah, this one was really, really tough moving to Jeffs because there was a lot going on, um, and it was hard to tell what was missing in our environment. Um, do you, are you familiar with this spec, Jose? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Um, do, can you, do you have special insight into why, into what makes it a challenge in the Jest environment? Like why it doesn't just work in the Jest environment if we just moved it right now? Uh, a couple of things that, I, that come to mind are, one, we need a full browser environment because this is not dependent on us. Uh, I don't know why we did this in the first place, but I think it was because some rather uh, rather weird bug where resizing the window didn't make each charts fire uh, the resizing event, and each charts all, all of a sudden just didn't resize the charts at all. Mm -hmm. And the other reason that uh, this is not possible for us to move to JS besides the browser environment is that uh, be, because of the way eCharts works, since eCharts can, can both render in SVG and Canvas, and by default, uh, as soon as it detects a smaller viewport, it will fire SVGs, uh, an SVG render process, and if it, it detects medium to large uh, viewports, it will render a Canvas process. Oh, wow. So. I have a question though about yep. not being able to write this to Capybara. Can't we mock the Kubernetes part? And that's the part that the backend team is trying to figure out. Uh -huh. Could, yeah. Um, when you say mock the Kubernetes part, you're not talking about mocking or standing up a fake Kubernetes server, Nico. You're no, talking no, about I'm talking just our, the API. Yeah, yeah, just our call directly to it. Can yeah. we mock that part? And that's what they're working on or something like yeah, that? Yeah, they're, they're working on, on something that uh, get us to that place. Because uh, having integration tests for this instead of relying on, on Karma, it will, be, it will be the best. Because the, the backing currently, the way it works is that we use the same thing as the CI CD team does, which is a reactive cache for some of those things. Mm -hmm. And reactive caching can be rather tricky to, to test because you have multiple network requests going uh, uh, at the same time. And until you get a positive response from the server or a 500, you don't stop pulling. So maybe, maybe, maybe I should pull a manager here and say, hey, let's say we have the objective to get Karma uh, removed in this next milestone. Um, yeah. What would we do about this test giving the constraints that you're describing? Because to me, it sounds like, I mean, it's a bad idea to remove coverage because it seems like a lot of your stuff is, or this monitor stuff is kind of not covered here, right? And other things that you described sound like, hey, eCharts is weird and hey, uh, hey, um, whatever, dependencies, 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 um, where I'm like, eh, it's basically like the Chrome browser bug, you know, <laughs> right? Like, um, you know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think I think that's a good call, IP, about prioritizing that environment because we want to get rid of these this karma job saves money. Um, yeah. I think I, I, I think be, I'd be down. Uh, I'll bring this up to the next monitoring call, and I'll I'll try to convince because because I think the biggest opponent to this one I, I have two two persons in mind that might not want this to be removed. And I'm thinking perhaps Clement and perhaps Miguel, but I think Dirash, Andre, and some of the other team members from the monitor team will not 
be opposed to this because well, I, I do agree. Well, when you say removed, do you mean moved to Capybara or just removed? You, just removed with a follow-up issue to make this a Capybara yeah, test. I, I would say let's not remove it. I would say let's create the issue. This is a, we're we're blocked from getting rid of karma by this specific test, which really needs to be at a higher level. And I think that's how I would. I would. So Phrase like one, one question I have though, like where did you fix this thing? I don't remember. This has been refactored so many times now. <laughs> I mean, because maybe it's a behavior that is fixed in GitLab UI, and then we could trust the coverage of GitLab UI. Um, I think but we might we we can rely on the intersection observer. Because I think we do use intersection observer for some of the chart components. Uh, you might you might want to go to the dashboard panel component. That's that's the one. And for each one of those, we have a. There's there's also a. Um, there's oh, a you have the resize there. observer. Yeah. Yes. Huh. So I mean, if you. Huh, on resize. Oh, and that might be all we need, though. Uh, that might be why it wasn't working. So since then, um, we now have like a standard, and, and you're aware of this IP, I think. We have a standard resize observer, intersection, intersection observer, like mock that we can use to trigger events and stuff that we need. I don't think we were doing that before. Um, huh. Should we just try to port it? We tried. I'm I'm up for trying. I'm I'm so up for trying again. Um, but and isn't the issue the fact that we depend on e-charts and the e-chart implementation needs a few million mocks to run proper? Um, but this is jest. the only this is the only monitoring spec that's not in jest. So it's not just all of monitoring has problems. It's this specific thing for some reason. I remember it was just so hard to do that. Um, I even search for this the searches for this SVG right. Yep. Yeah, but we, we worked for on this. Actually, the three of us, I think me, Lucas, and Paul worked paired on this. And let's let's pull up the recording and I'll watch it together right now. Just <laughs> in the, in, and and record it. Right. Um, okay. I, I I like I like host, I like the idea of of moving this. Not let's not just delete the spec because even though the spec is is funky, like that kind of is a sign that something underneath is funky and that's something we want covered. Um, so I would suggest, let's not remove it, but I would say, hey, we're blocked at removing karma until we find a nice home for this test coverage. And okay. that, might be, that might be talking to our test engineers too. Um, I don't know if monitoring has a test engineer and do they uh, yeah we do have tests? Sophia and she has been trying to get a integration test for all of the monitoring features because you know integration tests will be great to have okay yeah and if we can even move if we can move it to Jess that'd be great but um, I, I think it might be easier moving it to Capybara just I remember that being really difficult um, it might be different now I'm willing to try again that, that'd be very helpful <laughs> if, if we can move it to Jess. Like. Yeah. Ah, ah no, Nico. <laughs> Good, because you're writing proper commit messages. Thank you, Nico. Uh, Miguel. Sometimes. Yeah, okay. I think it's probably easier to look at the. Okay, so this one is not easy. Okay, cool. Yeah, good. Um, sadness. Um, okay, this one. Oh gosh. This one. Oh gosh. This is like one of the first ones. Um, yeah, this is a tough one too. To be honest, this is not a tough one. I love it because <laughs> this is definitely one that we can move to. Uh, that we can move to. Okay, let me. To GitLab UI because it's called View Shared Components Tooltip on Truncate. It's a component. I mean, let's let's go. do it. Let's do it right now. Yeah, cool. Uh, let me just stop my GDK. This is the last one, right? 
This is the last one. And I mean, you know, 20 minutes sounds good. Like move this one to GitLab UI and call it a day. Yeah. I, I think we tried this as well. Um, but I think it's worth trying again. Um, you tried to move it to GitLab UI? Yeah. Years ago. Years ago. Years ago. Um, not years ago. I've only been here for two years. So probably a year ago. <laughs> okay. Is there a GitLab UI thing somewhere? GitLab, GitLab UI. Oh. I don't even know. Yeah, let me see if I can find. Um, let me see if I can find that issue. Um, it's it on trunk. To be honest, like I'm. Ugh, this behavior is a bit. Ugh. Anyway, but yeah. The oh, directives tooltip. Oh no! Why does it do that? Oh no! <laughs> but why? <laughs> oh, it's using our. It's using our. Not our GL tooltip. E e oh, GL tooltip delay, delay element tooltip. I have no idea what that direct tooltip is. Okay. Yeah, my, my name's all over this component, so feel free to. It is? Yeah, feel free to say, like, man, whoever wrote this is. You know, it's Where garbage. We... They're garbage. You know, this is. <laughs> don't don't we have this nice tool, uh, this, this plop tool, right? How <sighs> does ha, anyone ever use this plop tool? Plop. 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 Wow, that's so cool. Yeah, it's right. like. Ah. Create basic empty component. Sounds good. Component name snake case. Tool chip on snake case. It's snake case, yeah. It was a snake who did like a. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the component, source component base, does that look right? What do you folks think? That looks right. Asset case component. Maybe it's a utility component. Oh yeah, I would say yeah. That's a good point too. I would think it's a utility. I didn't realize we had. Does utility. that look right? No. Uh, oh wow, that's so fancy. That's so fancy. Wow. Choose this directory. What did it do? We're done. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> Goodbye, guys. <laughs> oh, back it yeah, up. Just. Yeah, just guys right now. Okay, good. Um, I'm a senior plop engineer. Senior plop engineer. <laughs> this is a tooltip on Frontcake. So now, oh, it's, it's been years since I've uh, written code here. Um, yarn run. Story, I, I, storybook? Yeah. It's a storybook. Okay. Good. Okay. So this looks good to me. Let's copy it over. Oh. Oh no, neck. I'm losing against the neck. Um, and we want to use our tool, our tooltip direct, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what does it do? Update tool. Show tooltip. B tooltip. So we would do like import. Uh, do, I, do we I, do we import them from index? Like, is that how we do? You, do you know? Do we import them from the from the from the root index, or do we find it? Uh, it doesn't really matter. I think. Okay. I can I can have a look. I mean, it's uh, um, there. There is one instance where it's made a difference when someone's needed to mock like the a certain component or whatever if you if we mock at the index it's different than mocking at the path of that component that thing has that thing has come up um but i think in our case it's not a big big deal uh, okay yeah that's it's it's got cool okay import directives tooltip right 
Uh, probably like uh, import tool to cool. from okay. yeah. you, have, you have two eyes. The tool TIP. Oh, TIP. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. It's a better uh, tool tip. Yeah. Ah, fixed current file. Yep. Different rules for linting. What's going on? Uh, localhost 9000? 9001? It's over 9000. Oh, wait. No, which, which one is it? Like, really, like, oh, did maybe it, I need. To... Did it build? Oh, maybe I should do it on install. <laughs> Just saying. Sometimes I'll curious. Since you didn't, didn't touch the code base. Hey, how was your time in Prague, by the way, IP? Um, it was a really nice day. Um, I was missing all of those GitLabers, but otherwise, um, the wife and I, we had fun. Um, awesome. Unfortunately, you can't drink anything because uh, Czech Republic has a zero alcohol limit thing. And on every routine control, you have to do an alcohol test. So it's no, no drinking beer and driving in the evening or something. Right. Oh, wow. Um, so, but uh, apart from that, we had a good time. Um, nice food. Saw all the all the sites, and uh, hopefully the next contribute will be there so that you all can see the sites. That's awesome. What if you're going again? Where would where would you visit if you're going like gonna visit again? If we did have contribute, and you're like, hey, I'm gonna do this today. Uh, I don't know. It's it's all nice. It's nice in all buildings, uh, but. To be honest, like I think the problem is that um, so in our case we were just there one day and the wife yeah. never has been to Prague, so we basically did the the GitLab. Or I'm the first time in Prague too, right? Um, so I would probably visit some museums, um, especially around some uh, around certain painters. Um, so yeah, that's probably it. like Mucha. I don't know if you know Mucha. Uh, this nice, how do I think in, in English you call it like Art Nouveau? I hope these are kind of safe for work. Yeah, so he had this, oh, yeah, this like really with the with the thick outlines, yes, painting what kind style. Of, 19, what kind of style do they say it's like Art Nouveau? Art Nouveau, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. that's cool. I think, yeah, yeah, Art Nouveau, huh. it, even you know. His stuff matches. <laughs> so, storybook, please. Ah, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, an update is available. <laughs> so, it should be here, right? Utilities, truncate? No. Mm. Tooltip on truncate. I, maybe we need to import it somewhere else. You need to declare it in the storybook. Um, ah, no. Cool, cool. It's there, but it has the wrong name. Because it has like this uh, utility. Uh, right? um, okay, it's now there. Uh, we use the GL. How do we actually use that tooltip on truncate thing? Does anybody know? Does um, somebody know? It has content inside of it. I think it has a slot. Yep. Okay. And then Let you me pass. May maybe maybe find a real life example somewhere. Yeah, that's a good idea. Or maybe from our spec, right? Maybe a real, or maybe a real example. Oof. This has a spec. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so you just put a text inside. Yeah. And you oh, give wow. it like a title and stuff, um, but it's on truncate, so you also have to like do some fancy CSS-y things to like get the width to truncate it, you know? Well, this would be fun because it's like inside of an iframe and, oh uh, yeah. Oh, where is it? Ah, it's gone, right? Because it's now here. Oh, looks good oh, to me. Yeah, all right. It's not so, truncating. Yeah, <laughs> so you have to like, We'll use utility classes to like give a div with a fixed 
thing. I would now look at the spec of however we set up that. Okay. Obviously. Style normal, style overflowed. So, okay, we have like a diff with max with whatever, right? Yeah. That thing. Just and then say, on line 11, there's the, the shared rules. Target child, target title, line 11, shared rules. Ah, yes. Okay, yeah. White space. So it's, it's like this, yep. right? Like, cool. Yep. So we just, oops. Ah, two editors, diff style equals this. And then it probably needs some tool to be stuff. Hey, title. Wow. Okay. Uh, what else? Placement? I don't Order? think. I don't know if it needs, maybe it does need placement. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Whoa. Oh, oh okay. Oh, no. Inspect element doesn't work here, right? Like, oh, it should work. It doesn't work? Yeah, no, I think it does. You just have a lot of uh, stuff around. Oh, wait, no, I got confused. I, I thought you were talking about the BU inspector. That one oh, you need yeah. to run a, a, a small script. Uh, uh, or I can just open it in the iframe, right? There's a slight differentiation between our template here and the unit test spec. Um, and it's that in the unit test, our style was applied on the GL the 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 tooltip on truncate itself i don't know if that makes a huge difference but that's what it seemed like <clears throat> seemed like it was? what was happening oh let's oh. just copy those props maybe um that might be nice yeah title is like what is title that that would be your I uh, create rep component. Ah, I see now. Slots, text, long props data. Uh, expect. Uh, okay, has tooltip. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Uh, so I would um, on our on our other spec on our on our Karma spec, I would copy yeah. that template, and and then let's just work off that to make sure we're actually doing the exact same thing. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, no worries. So, I mean, like, hey, this is exactly the thing, right? So, this is the style overflow. Ah, that's uh, probably copy pasted from that page, you know, style overflow. Um, yeah. Oh, title is empty, right? Oh, yeah, good, good. Good observation. I, I, I'm just, uh, I don't want to enter all of your names and Paul is the oh, I appreciate one to write. Yeah. Uh, you'll, uh, oh, ah, okay. You, you, you ah. do want the long text going on. So. Yeah. Yeah, now, now, I, now I get the whole purpose of that component. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Paul, not using you. Thanks. My middle I, I, name is, is Lorem anyway, so I'm just joking. <laughs> Lorem. <laughs> Paul Lorem. <laughs> Love yep. it. Oh, baby. We got it working. All right. Um, so now the test, though, is that it doesn't do the tooltip if it doesn't, if it's not truncated. That's the other thing. Um, so let's add another story. Where like, so we have a default here. Yeah. So we we, we I, I think the truncated version shouldn't be the default. And also we have a problem. How do we? Oops, how do? Whoop, how do we? Whoop, how do we? <laughs> uh, how do we uh, show the? How do we show the tooltip in the test? Right, because. What happens? Yeah. You know, like. Is, is there a way that when we take a screenshot or something, are we able to? 
I mean, I we probably screenshot the we probably screenshot the tooltips, right? Like, so there has be has to be a way. Yeah, there's there's one. I saw base dash tooltip. That's the for the component, right? But I think are those always on? Like if you if you load up that example, it's always open. <sighs> yeah. Makes our life way harder. So where do we do these? Where do we take these screenshots? Wait. We do have other tests, right? Am I we do have other tests, but they are co-located or where are they? Yes, ah, they're here. They are right. Yeah. It's but they're lovely. But they are, but yeah, that's super lovely. Um, the loveliest. Um, the, the problem is like, we have the same problem here again, that we are in Jest and don't have the browser, right? Like in the normal specs. Well, yeah. Yeah. But if so, we could replace it with some screenshot specs, that'd be really nice. Yeah. And so, I'm, I'm all for doing that. Um, we can replace the ones that don't translate nicely over to screenshots um, specs, but it sounds like we'll need a way to somehow like trigger hover Probably right before data? we do. So this sounds like we can have a mounted, right? Oh, oh, oh. I think you're right. Document. Oh no, like this refs. Target focus. Does this work? I would, you, yeah. Try this L. Do you want to just do this? That. Oh yeah, we can give it a ref. Uh, yeah. Cool. It may have to be the slot children. I'm not 100% certain, um, but let's see what happens. Uh. What is happening? Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah. Oh no, it's not a function. Talk focus is not a function? Probably need to do like some more element shenanigans, right? Ah, yes. So element, right? Oh, right, because it gives you the, the actual component. Hmm. So if I wasn't, if I wasn't refing a component, I would get the element, right? Yeah. So we could you're just... still in the console lock. Oh, yeah. So we did just, we just console lock the response of focus. Um, so how do you, and I, that's the next question, how do you programmatically um, trigger a tooltip? And there's, and we're using bootstrap tooltips. There's a way to do this. Um, and, and I think it's actually a lot easier than what we're doing right now. Uh, there, is a, there is a prop in the in tooltip that is make it always permanent active, but you need to pass it down now. There's but also- the problem is, But the problem is we don't always make it active, right? Like, hey, we just, we can also bootstrap tooltips listen to the root elements events. So we can also probably just run uh, bootstraps um, like show all tooltips, and it's not going to work. We we don't ha we don't bind the tooltip if we're not supposed to show it. So do you know what I'm saying? Like you can just run. We don't have to like manually trigger with the element. We can just run like this dot root emit. Um, let me show you what I'm looking at. Uh, in our Zoom chat. Here we go. I, I sent, uh, yeah, our Zoom chat um, something. Yeah. Oh, they didn't capture the anchor. But if you go to the global root instance events, like this is a kind of a hacky way to get them to, so you can emit the ID to get all tooltips to show up. Um, 
Ah, but I can hide all, can I show all? Yeah, if you look at the third example and then the, the text right below, it says to open all simultaneously and then the ID argument. Ah. So, but what we might need to do is, an, is a next tick because tooltip on Truncate might be thinking about something right now. Um, so if this doesn't work, I'd like to try a next tick. And if that doesn't work, then I don't know. Yeah, on, on mounted, can we try a next tick? Or timeout. Just for the sake of testing. This sounds like a flaky test already. Nice. Nonsense. Oh, Nico had to add up. Yes! Woohoo! I think Woohoo! we can see next tick. I think next tick will do it. I'm putting all my money on this. Or we could do this dot dollar next tick, man. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Sorry, no! mate. Okay, I lost all my money. <laughs> So the actual interesting thing is that the, um, I mean, we're not directly in the component here, right? Like, um, uh, you know what I mean? It's like, we cannot watch the props or anything of that component. So, so maybe, and you bring up a good point. I bet what we really should do is have tooltip on, and we do this sometimes to keep tasks from being flaky. It's yeah. really nice when collaborators emit semantic events. And I would suggest let's have our tooltip on truncate collaborator emit an event when I've actually set up my tooltipy thing. Um, like after, so after I do update tooltip, um, yeah. yeah, after update tooltip, if we could do um, like something like yeah, up, like this dot emit update or something. Um, that might be really nice. Okay. So what we do here is like add update. Yeah. Oh no, Jose left too. So. Show me what you got. Uh, methods, right? Yep. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. I I'm just, you know, in order <sighs> to... Oh, yeah. Is it actually running that? That's really frustrating. Um, yeah, obviously it is. Okay, right? can we try a next? Can we try a next tick? No, 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 no. Uh, you know what we're doing? It's like this show tooltip. We're sending it, um, and then we are doing like the foo. Uh, the, the the foo. We need to do the foo, and then if we do if foo, because can we console log foo real fast too? Well, obviously we can console that too. Oh no, it actually is true already, right? Give me my foo. Why don't I have a foo? There is no film. But how, isn't it like how you emit the stuff? Like yeah. with an... That's how you do it. But that, that should be a Boolean, right? Yeah. If you, if you go back to tool tape on, if you go back to our, our spec that we're writing. What am I, what am I, what am I? He says, what am I? Truncate target. So we need to give it a target. Does it have a target? It does. We copied this over. And no, so we didn't. Truncate tra target. Yeah, try yeah. Okay. Um, if we go to, uh, it's not console logging the foo. Can you put ah. on a different console log? It, it just logged it. Oh, it did? Just recompiled. Right. So it has an update tooltip. But it is hitting it, and it is saying, yes, we should do a tooltip. 
all that's working kind of as expected and it's doing it before we trigger bootstrap to do its thing um can we do a uh can we try a next tick around the the shell real fast too Oh gosh. Man, but the set timeout works. Yeah. Man. Does it work with <laughs> it even works without any Do you do you know how mounted relates to children and stuff? Like which triggers first? I think the children would be mounted first. Um, but I'm, I'm probably also just coming up with that and don't actually have a reason why I believe that. Because it sounds to me like you would need to mount the children first. Um, I don't know. Though. Part child, part child. So we mount the parent first. Mount parents first? Yes. No, child part child. Oh, did yeah. the child child first? And then the parent and then the child? What? Cause like if you think about the render function, you pass the render function, you pass a component, a child component, to say, hey, create this component. And that's gonna the I could say, hey, here's my parent. I'm started my render function, but I'm not finished rendering until my child finishes rendering. That's yeah. like, if you think about, um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm a little frustrated that this isn't working. There's other events. There's other tooltip events we can listen to. Um, looks like Bootstrap emits a BV tooltip enabled. And so maybe we can just listen to that. And then when it's enabled, let's try to show it. If you go down to, um, yeah, those are some global events that, oh, but wait, that's, no, those look like specific events. What are the root event listeners? Oh yeah, there's, there's, oh wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it should be fine because this root is, you know, like, but how do we listen to it? Like, so we would do this root dot on, dot dot yeah, dollar yeah, on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This root dot on. I feel so dirty. Yep. Show me what you got. <laughs> yeah, you see that the show me what you got, you know, triggers really early. And the BV tooltip enabled never triggers. Can we try instead of the root on and mounted? Can we try it? Oh, but it is, it's opening up now, right? Oh, that's yeah, it's it's that timeout. Yeah. Can we try the root on? Can we try that on created instead of mounted? Mounted works. Updated. Because created is like at the very top before yeah yes how you want the the creative to like this yeah gotcha it's still not running the tooltip thing okay that's fine unenabled unshown unhide undisabled i mean do we I don't know. Ah, root event listeners. Mm -hmm. Ah, it's a neighbor. I'm gonna look up um I'm gonna look at their their source code, the <laughs> tool set. But yeah, we're also at time too. Um these were some of the interesting issues that we had with with moving it over. Um but I think we're really close. I think now 
the the next step I was going to look at was, is there something semantic going on underneath the hood with tooltip that we can just hook into? Uh, I mean, couldn't couldn't what what do you? Uh, I don't think mounted can be async. Mounted can be async. It can be. You should do our interview. It, well, it can be, but it doesn't wait for it, right? Yeah, that's definitely true. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, if uh, I'm also, I'm also, since this is just a task, I'm also kind of fine if we do set. So set timeout could work, um, if we can then somehow tell story shot not to take the snapshot until we're semantically ready. So like after I do set timeout, maybe then I can emit events to tell story shot. How do they initiate? Can you remind me real quick how we decide that someone is, is a screenshot like, how do we do I, it? Do I think we, it's by default. I think we take screenshots. I think you can only, I think you can opt out of it. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. So this, this, if I commit it like this, it already should be doing a screenshot, right? I think so. I, I'm probably wrong. Um, but uh, you can look at story shots.spec, um, which is in, under the test folder. It's in your file tree, visible right there. Yes. Um, init story shots. Uh, I'm just interested in the. Yeah, I think it's. I think it just does it. I think it's opt out. I think that was a, a feature that we done. I'm not 100% certain on that, but I think it does it by default. Um, and you can opt out of. But but that that means like this default to top one, right? Probably generate tooltip, make tooltip. Uh, probably uh, has no no picture, right? Like I think it does, top? right? We just saw them. Maybe it doesn't. I mean, let's let's just have a look at default yeah. to top. No, there is one. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think I think all stories we take a snapshot but, by default. But but have a look, they, they actually focus on the on the thing. You see that? You see the focus uh, outline? So uh, they, they they might be so doing something in their that's a good call. mounters. This next tick element query selector button focus. So they actually do exactly the thing, right? Let's maybe maybe give it a try and uh, in the story shot spec, uh, no, it's the stories, right? Maybe instead of that, we just, you know, element selector and we just give that like an ID is that equal foo bar two? <laughs> just in order to- you can, you can ref a slot child. Yes, I know. I, I just was like, hey, if they're using oh, sure, a query sure. selector. Yeah, that's, that's fine. That makes sense. Yeah. If they if they are using a query selector, probably has a reason, right? Maybe. Maybe maybe because it's it's I, I think this one is interesting because we're our tooltip has not been our tooltip we have to calculate whether we do the tooltip or not. Oh, yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, I, I just put it into a button because right. I thought maybe it's because of focus and whatnot. But I think the challenge has to do with us needing to calculate whether we are creating a tooltip or not. Um, and the way all that gets synced up, like hopefully Bootstrap isn't doing some sort of like interval checking on time things that's hooked outside of the whole view rhythm. Um, but even then the focus thing doesn't work. Do you see that? Like, oh, if you do set timeout, the focus doesn't work. Nah, it's like, oh, that's weird. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, that was an unsatisfying one without uh, resulting well, work request. Would you be cool with committing this and pushing it up still, and uh, we can kind of asynchronously 
Yeah, sure. Toy around it. That would be that'd be helpful. Um, I think we're really close. I do think we're close. Um, to to be honest, like, hey, we have this this mounted thing, and I'm just going to put the set timeout here because that worked earlier. And if it works in the screenshot, then we're happy. Does it is it working right now? Oh yeah, it's it works working right, right now. With even without passing anything, does it timeout? Wow. Oh yeah, we don't need the update thing. Wow. Huh. I mean it's a, it's a bit weird because we're not hovering it, right? Like Yeah. How is this actually implemented? It's like span if I mean maybe we can document very selector. Let me just try that real quick. Um, focus. I don't know. Can you even focus a span? Hmm. That's a good question. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Tooltip does different hooks based on what kind of element it is. Focus. Well, yeah. Maybe not a span. Maybe that's problematic. I don't know. It's a good question. Focus a span. So, um, yeah, I don't know. If set timeout works and it works consistently, consistently, I mean, I, I might be fine with it. Um, yeah. So it's it's nice we got something kind of working here. Um, Focus something. Okay. Yeah, that's weird. All right. Well, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna hop off. Cool. Sounds good. Okay. Hey, thanks so much. I'm. No worries. I was surprised we only had like four to five karma specs. Yeah. Um. So, are you also wanting to create issues for all of those? Yeah, I, I, I will create. I, okay, I will create. Yeah. Epic. That, that's super helpful. Thanks. Um, yeah. Will do. Awesome. Yeah, and then do ping me on this MR specifically with the tooltip on Truncate. Uh, that'd be cool. All right. Hey. Uh, Lucas, cool. thanks, and Vitaly, have a great rest of your day. You too. Bye. I'll catch you all later. Bye.